In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert an SVG file or EPS file to an editable poly or mesh. Okay, whichever you prefer. It does not matter if the file is in SVG or in EPS. So far, you can open that file in Illustrator. I mean, Adobe Illustrator, you can do, okay, you can import it into 3ds Max. Okay, the file we are going to be using, this is um, a free asset that you can get from freepik all you have to do is go over there register and then I'm, I'm going to put this link the link to this file in the description so do where to download it i'm going to be importing this into 3ds max okay and we're going to be converting each and every one of them into editable poly or mesh whatever and i will show you how and then we're going to go further but to apply material to it and then do if just a very quick render from it so that we can see some issues that might come up when you're doing this and how to solve them okay i'm going to minimize this i've already downloaded it so if you haven't all you have to do is all you have to do is hit the download button and then attribute i'm going to make sure you attribute the owner like when you click on download now see free download okay make sure to give attribute to the owner of this okay this is the image by okay all right so attribute him he has done a great work okay it's because of him that we're here all right so now the next thing i want us to do is open up that file in illustrator okay this is the file this is where it is so i'm just going to like double click it now illustrator will start opening it so when that happens i want you to go ahead okay and then save this file as okay save as i don't know saving on my computer okay and then i'm going to save it as illustrator okay adobe illustrator that ai and i'm going to say save then this will come out now i'm going to go down to illustrator 8 okay when you do that just say okay say okay now when that is done let's go back to our 3ds max all right you can see what i've done here and then first of all let me choose a double viewport and i'm going to import this file so i'm going to go to import import then i'm going to come in here this is the file i just exported just go to where use this or this to go to where you exported your own okay and i'm going to import it i'm going to say open yeah okay just keep saying okay and everything will be in this is the file we just exported this is what we just downloaded from here all right so this is just the first step we have just imported it but you can see that this is still you know more or less a line and they are all meshed together okay they are all merged together as you can see so if you select one all of them select first of all i'm going to show you how to separate this and then how to make the most out of it okay so i'm going to bring it here and let's even find out the scale of this so i'm going to draw a box right beside them okay so i want, oh, I want this thing to be 600 by 600 600 box that's six centimeters by six centimeters you can see how little these things are so i'm just gonna scale it up a little bit okay i'm just gonna scale it up a little bit so that at least one of it fits into 600 by 600 box okay i think that's okay now so i'm gonna select this box i'm going to delete it okay but if you want it to be little it can still be little it doesn't really matter i just want it to be sizable okay so now that it is it is in here you can just come over here with your modifier and then apply the extrude modifier on it if i should turn this into default shading you're going to see that we're already having our shapes turn into poly it's not yet poly all i have to do is just select it and convert it to tape poly and it should become a tape poly or mesh whatever i want but there are some issues all right when you come over here you find out that this is not what we're supposed to be seeing this additional place that we're having here did not convert okay there are some issues that we might have to fix there all right so but then let me go back select this go back here and it did delete this 
a distrude modifier that we just applied. So first of all, I will start by separating these things. It is selected, so I'm going to select this. So with this now, I can select this one, okay? And when I do that, I'll go to geometry, come down here, you're going to see detach, okay? I'm going to detach it, now it's on its own. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for everything. I'm going to detach them and have them stand on their own. All right. So when you select one, you find out that the gizmo is not centered. So just come over here to the hierarchy, click on this, and then click on that. It's going to center it to the middle of the said object. So I don't think we are going to have any issue with this. So I'm just going to select this and then you can even right click and convert to editable poly if you want and that is going to give you this but before you do this let me control undo this before you do this i suggest you use the extrude modifier because this gives you the ability to increase the height all right when you do that it gives you the ability to increase the height you can make it whatever you want so easily so let's make it three for now all right for this I think we are going to have issues with this because of the way this is structured. So uh, we're going to work on it quite a bit before we try to make it, you know, apply the extrude modifier to it. So I'm just going to select this segment and I'm going to select this segment and I'm going to delete it. Hit the delete key on your button. I'm going to select this. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select this and I'm going to delete it. Now I'm going to use vertex okay use vertex and bring this close okay to each other like this okay zoom in as much as you as you can to keep bringing them close then try as much as you can to keep them on top of each other then select the two and then weld it okay now they are together now all right so let's see if it's going to work now. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to apply the extrude modifier on it. Now, when I do that, you find out that it's working now. All right. It is working now. So you can come over here and reduce it if you want, but I'm not going to do that. For this, let's see what happens. It's not working. A lot of it is empty where they are supposed to be filled. So I'm going to delete this under. Okay, you see, you see how it is done. So here you find out that there is a line here that is not connected to anything. All right, we just need to understand how this is supposed to work. So this, this, this entire thing is supposed to be one and flow in together. So I'm just going to select this and select the vertex select this particular one and then move it back okay let me see just let me just delete that and select this and move it down a little bit okay all right just like that Okay, you can make these little changes to this. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use the segment to select this and delete it. Uh-huh. Okay. So when things like this is becoming difficult for you to sort out, okay, you just know that there are two vertices that the dots are very close but they are not joined so how do you solve this issue okay i tried to solve it you know normally but it's not going to solve so i'm just going to select all the vertices here okay increase this in a little bit to like oh no this is too much let me make it like 0 0.2 okay and then i'm going to weld it it is going to you know change this element a little bit if you remember this is not exactly how it was looking but it is looking very close to what it was looking like but now that issue will, will not come up again so if i come over here and extrude it you can see the part that is supposed to be extruded and now extruded okay just you know increase that weld a little bit okay say 0.1 something or 0.2 and then weld it is going to get the 
the vertices that are not that are supposed to be closed to the border not closed it is going to close them okay thereby solving that problem for you this particular one here you're just going to extrude it and you find out that here is not you know the way it should be so you delete it using this method that i just showed you now okay all right just um weld it okay and then extrude and there you have it homeboy this two extrude oh this just worked perfectly all right i'm going to extrude this one too oh this just worked out very well too so very quickly i'm just going to okay add a plane down here all right I'll add yeah so i'm going to make this plane very big i'm going to convert hold on add my safe frame zoom in a little bit just like this a bit now i'm going to convert this view to my camera by just clicking this button okay this becomes a corona camera okay and uh, things become become a little bit different all right so um First thing first, I'm not going to even waste time with this material application. I just want to show you something. The Corona material library that comes with Corona. I'm going to come over here to wood and I'm going to use this. Apply it there to the plane. Okay. And then I'm going to map it using the UVW map. Okay. Put it in plane, leave it in plane and then real world. Okay. With that, we have it. So I'm going to add light in this scene. I'm going to hit it on my keyboard. Then click on none make sure you're in corona and then come down here you are going to see corona sky i'm going to select it and i'm going to open my render setup that's something i want us to fix there so we can move forward all right so i'm going to go to performance and i'm going to reduce remove this thing okay put it in none all right okay come back here ah uh, it doesn't really matter it is not even why we're here so i'm just gonna leave it as it is and then i'm going to close this for now all right so i'm going to now start interactive render i'm going to open my okay my vfb my frame buffer select this place all right don't worry about that i know it's too bright i'm going to fix it in a bit i just want to lock this okay now i'm going to reduce the exposure okay bring it down to we are having something really nice mm -hmm. so it's time for me to apply materials to this i'm going to select all of them i'm going to select all of them and i'm going to apply a metallic material to to it yeah let's go with the metal let's go with the chrome okay it's looking good it's looking nice but at the end of the day you find out that the edges are still very sharp that the edges are still very sharp as you can see okay let's say you want to make the edges not to be sharp all right you might say okay let me use let me use chamfer okay but chamfer is not going to help chamfer is going to tear it apart as you can see this is what chamfer did to it all right okay you say let me reduce the amount make it a little bit smaller okay let me just stop this interactive render for a minute let's just go and see how it is affecting it i'm going to change this thing to clay mode you can see what the chamfer is doing to it i can just say okay let me reduce it to 0.5 that's still the same issue so chamfer is not going to help us we can try turbo smooth that is even worse like is even at the first iteration is even doing this so you can say okay let's try mesh smooth 
the same thing. So how do we not get the edges to bevel when, as you can see, any little thing we do to this, it is going to make it get, you know, squished up or torn apart. You can do that using material now. Okay. Let me just pick the material that I've already applied to this. Pick it out. So, all right. So I'm going to find corner around edges. All right. So you go to maps, corona, you're going to see corona around edges here. So I'm going to drag it in and I'm going to put it, plug it to the bump. All right, so when I do that, now I can see everything is still straight. There is no curve to it whatsoever. But when I come here and I increase this radius, you'll start noticing some curves around the edges. Okay. You can see the curves coming out. All right. All the edges will now have the set curve. Come here, you're gonna see, make this big, you're gonna see the the edges are now smoothly bending. Okay, you can take this to like 10 millimeter. You're gonna see the changes. Maybe the reason why you are not noticing this thing is probably because of the type of material that we're using. If I should use Kona Legacy material, select this. Let me use let me select this object and apply this to it you can see the edges are straight right when i take this and apply it to the bump you're gonna see the edges will now be smooth as you can see okay the edges are now very smooth so you can increase this Alright, so you can see everywhere is now smoothened. If I should remove this now, sorry, not that. If I should remove this now, it is going to go back to being straight. Alright, let me just apply the chrome material back to it. Okay, so that's it. That's how you can convert an SVG EPS, you know, file to 3D object. You can select this now, no doubt. It is still an extrude modifier. You can select it and make it a poly or a mesh. Now, when you do that, all the options will be available for you to edit this thing further into the geometry that you want. Okay, same goes for this. I can change this to mesh. Let me solve this. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. If you're new to this channel, subscribe. Not only subscribe, but ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorial. Alright? Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.